we're actually working on a project together, maybe at some point, um, along with probably a lot of the other women here. Um, but I'd like you to just intro yourself and what you're doing at the moment, because you work with on impact and strategy, and you do PR. So tell us a little bit more about you. Okay, thank you so much. Uh, hi, everybody. Um, thanks for having me today. It's uh, unannounced. I just popped in. Um, that's what the blockchain is, right? I mean, as it just popped in. <laughs> we <laughs> yeah. didn't expect that. Um, but yes, like I've, I've been working in different industries uh, since 2009. I studied at NASA Ames um, uh, for a uh, space studies program, International Space University. Um, I worked in fi finance and technology, disruptive technologies. Um, and exponential impact. Um, but then blockchain was something that was really related to what I would actually want in order to make that huge impact in the world. And that was the solution. Uh, I just joined in September um, for advising on an ICO. And since then, I've been very uh, excited about the hype and about the industry and about the possibility that is abundant, um, the social impact that we can create uh, that we've never seen before. Or perhaps it's the next revolution at, uh, after the internet. It could be the next tw 20 years or 30 years, God knows. But this is here today, and we have to take the momentum. It's incredible. It seems like we're actually taking money from the rich and giving it to the poor, which is just crazy, isn't it? That that is actually is that what we're doing now. Um, actually, really good segue from what you covered is... Um, like, what are your backgrounds? Like, I'd love to know how you even got into the space. What did you do before? Yeah, do you want to kick off, Tony? Sure. Uh, so my background is art in and of itself, like both in the way I lived my life and what I actually did. So I went to school and studied broadly. Like, we could talk about disciplines that were aligned with a major, but I don't really believe in institutionalized education as any kind of representation of who a person is or what they study. Uh, so I studied performance art and propaganda theory, uh, and that was those were two different areas of study in between uh, the three months in silence I spent with a Buddhist monk. Studying performance art, being in art school in and of itself, if anyone goes to college, that's the only recommendation I would really make is you'll get a completely different kind of community, and the way you get ingrained into uh, experiential knowledge is different than any other um, system of education I've ever been in. So... I got into blockchain because after spending this time in silence um, with the monk, I essentially ended up realizing that I needed to restructure the world, and in restructuring the world, understood that Keynesian economics are broken and that we are fundamentally manipulating the idea of our own self-worth to drive our economy, um, and the process of politics is largely a, a manufactured illusion, a manufactured consent. And so I started speaking about this stuff publicly, and in 2011, I had someone just drop a USB of Bitcoin into my hands. They were like, you are so radically right, because I feel that you're the only person I've spoken to who sees what's real, and who is willing to go far enough to question why we should change what that is. So I would say, like everything in my life, um, how have I done anything? Basically luck and like being a good friend. <laughs> that's like, that's how I got into blockchain um, and have been really, I mean, dedicated ever since. Amazing, yeah. amazing story of how you kind of made that transition. <laughs> it's, it's incredible. What about you, Emma? Nice. Um, yes, yeah, so I like how you said um, that with the institutionalized education, because mine isn't really traditional either. So I pretty much, there's, well, main, two, two main reasons why I think I am where I am am today in, in this crazy world of blockchain. Um, the number one is I got very lucky at an early age. I had a mentor who taught me from the system, um, about the world from a, from a perspective outside the system. Um, so he, he's my business partner now as well, and that's totally incredible to me. And so I learned since 2013 about um, blockchain, about crypto, about entrepreneurship in itself, and I was fascinated by it. The other thing is I'm very curious, curious, and I always tell this to people, like, if you don't have a talent or whatever it is, if you think you're, you're useless, as long as you're curious, you can do something in your life, because curiosity is what drives me. And um, so I got more interested, more involved, did a lot of research, and since we have the internet, an ever-growing library of wisdom, basically, we can, do, we can take this tool and um, leverage it to create our own educational path, and so that's what I did. Um, 
I went into business when I was um, 14, going on 15, um, to create a digital marketing agency. Um, yeah, co-founded that, and so was passionate about how the digital transition and how that can really change the world. Um, but at the same time, still interested in crypto and all of that. Um, then in 2016, which is when uh, Steemit launched, some of you might know, have heard of uh, blockchain Steam, um, which is now what we're based on. So um, Epix is actually an SMT going to be launched on the Steam blockchain. But um, in 2016, I saw their site, found out about um, Steemit, and posted my first blog post. So I then became transitioned from learning trading, investing, to um, blogging on blockchain, um, and then became a speaker for their company, and that was pretty crazy. And then slowly transitioned into now how do we bridge the gap for anyone to enter the space and merge the two, the mainstream world, um, network of influential we already, people we already had, tools, experience, um, merge that with this crypto space, and that's how Epix pretty much came about. That. I love it, mm -hmm. I love it. And I really like how you've kind of researched on that mentorship is really key. Yes. Because that, that's definitely, and I think when we spoke earlier, that actually having kind of male champions and other like female mentors mm -hmm. It's really key to kind of push you into the limelight, but also into this space as well. That's amazing. Um, Kat, what about you? So I have a more traditional background, which I guess makes sense, coming from healthcare. So I left my full-time job at Yale New Haven December 2016. So we've been doing this for about a year and a half, but our company is built on two years uh, plus of research where we tested the market and wanted to really understand how we can make true change in healthcare. A lot of healthcare applications or companies uh, often start without testing the market or without coming from that background of the business side of healthcare. And I think we do have a strategic edge in that we took the time to really assess, understand where physicians and hospitals in the market itself are going. Um, and I started on that journey because I was within, I'd been at Yale New Haven Hospital for six months and just moved through my work really, really quickly. I had never worked in a hospital before. I had never grown market share for anything, but I was in charge of growing the market share for the entire health system, which is three hospitals, a physician group, and a connection to the university for the entire medicine and surgery service lines for the health system. And so I just poured over the data, I poured over our tools, I learned them, I mastered them really, really quickly, and within six months became a technical trainer for all of our tools, onboarded all of our new employees, and then just kept going back to my manager and saying, what, what else, what else, what else can I do? And it became very clear that in the institution of healthcare where I had chosen to work, Yale, that it, there wasn't really a path forward at the speed that I wanted to move at something that would actually satis really just satisfy my curiosity mm -hmm. and, and my soul for wanting to work really fast and hard and focused. And so I went on this journey. Um, I had an hour commute one way, so two hours every day, and just really started to think about what is it that I wanted to do with my life. If I'm not satisfied at the sixth largest hospital, one of the top academic medical centers, what is it that's actually going to satisfy my soul? And so I, I started to think back. The two times where I was most satisfied in my life was college and Teach for America. And the reason why is because when you are a college student, um, you have a lot of autonomy. And I'm not saying autonomy like it's college, it's fun, it's crazy, but you get to decide which, what path you want to take, um, your courses, the direction of the life that you want to do, and you are your own entity for the first time in your life. You are separated from your parents, you are your own. And then when I was a, teach for, a teacher for Teach for America, um, I was on the Texas-Mexico border where a lot of my students didn't have roofs on their houses, running water. Um, they were English language learners. And I was very challenged in that classroom. And I realized that the harder that I worked and the more effort that I put in, the further gains that my students made. And we did this all together. And so I realized that there's a strong perspective of entrepreneurship in both of those. And I said, this is what I want to do. And so then I just went on a two-year journey of, of kind of figuring out where I wanted to go. And then the tipping point was when I needed our first platform that I mentioned, the care coordination platform at Yale. I couldn't find it, and so we built it. And we attained revenue within seven months, uh, which is about, uh, it's two to three times faster than most enterprise healthcare companies. So that is my journey. It's so incredible. And I think Thanks. what's so interesting is, like, we just didn't see anything out there that yeah. we wanted. Like, yeah. it wasn't there. And the same sort of background is to me, like, I couldn't find another female yeah. online community where I wanted to go, where I could access, like, I'm very, like, when you're a very early stage entrepreneur, who do you listen to? Who should you be reading books from? Like, I didn't know any of that. Um, and so coming from, like, a corporate world and the traditional background and that route, like, where, where do you even look? Like, it's, um, it's all over the place. So, um, yeah, that's why I created Triangles for that reason. Um, but the, the, one of the questions I wanted to ask was a bit 
more for the crowd. So what's going to help them, I know that a number of people are going for ICOs or, or fundraising at the moment. You guys have all been through it, or you've been working on a number of them. What's, what's your top kind of tips for people who are raised an ICO? Um, yeah, any advice? Like what's your, what, what can you provide with them? Don't launch an ICO. <laughs> A lot of people uh, keep saying this. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think that, so, so here's the thing. What's happening right now is we're going through, this is like so much of what I study in both like performance art and these ideas of what is, you know, questioning what is actually even reality. Um, and we're starting to go through what I call like the period of disillusionment. And what's happening is that everyone looked at ICOs and they were like, oh, wow, like this market's so frothy, $60 million, no product, just WordPress. Like that was essentially your qualifications for launching an ICO. We're like, oh, like I'm not joking you, you guys. I had an investor say this. They were like, I don't know, like they have a WordPress site, seems legit. And I was like, no, no, sweetie. Let me just like, do you need help here? Let me help you. Um, so I would say that if you're actually looking at contributing to the ecosystem meaningfully, you need to be building a protocol infrastructure, and that protocol actually needs to have a level of inter interdependency um, with other pieces of protocol infrastructure. If you're just launching an application, um, that's not where the market opportunity is. The market opportunity is in building infrastructure because that's the phase that we're in right now. There are some applications that are built on top of these blockchains or people launching ICOs that may actually create something valuable and meaningful that may just change the foundation of the world as we know it, right? And that's awesome, like power to you. Uh, but at the same time, if you actually wanna contribute from a, a meaningful technical perspective, um, it's not in building an application. We're not at a point where, if you wanna build something that's gonna actually capitalize on ubiquitous uh, infrastructure for user interface, uh, it's not going to be siloing yourself into building one app. So I think a lot of dApps are looking at the short-term gains and not their long-term roadmap. And okay. so if you really want to build something, you need to build a marketplace of marketplaces, not just a sandbox. You need to own the playground. Yeah, it seems like that's really great to hear, like so refreshing. And I, but I think a lot of people have actually said that on the panels yesterday and today, all talking around what you've just said, and also like the legalities around it, like have a great legal mm -hmm. team. Like that's what we keep saying is yep. legal, legal, legal all the time. Yeah. Um, I really want to hear from kind of your perspectives in terms of marketing and marketing agencies, and, yeah. and you work mm -hmm. on a number of PR yeah. strategies. So how how do they do that successfully? Like I know that community is key, um, but yeah, what, what what is so what's really important in terms of, of your marketing strategy? Um, yeah, what I can say what to me really stands out and what always surprises me when even when I was working with clients back then is them always looking from the company perspective. So how do we get more sales or how do we, uh, sh should we do this? Um, should we be more like this or more like this to have this sort of image? Um, instead of really focusing on how are the users perceiving this? What is your audience thinking? And just going back to basics, like I think it always comes down to basics. Like even with the ICOs, what you were just saying, like stick to the traditional model and um, and think about you know what makes a company what successful, what makes a any product successful. This has nothing to do with blockchain or with what technology we're using. Even though of course we're talking about something really cool and incredible and revolutionary. But when it comes to success and how do you market something, it always comes down to the basics. That's what I believe in, and it has always worked that way. So sometimes, you, of course, you have to adjust and take different approaches depending on where the market, what market we're talking about. Um, so there's changes here and there, but it's, it, it's still, it's, the main thing we're talking about is what is the user experiencing, um, getting into their seat and kind of seeing it from the outside perspective and always asking for feedback. If you're sort of too much in, already in the company and you can't get that outside view, just yeah. get it through feedback. Ask mm -hmm. people what can you do um, and how would you, um, yeah, w what do you think of this, marketing, um, of this marketing ad or whatever it is, you know, always ask for feedback because even when you look now at, at TV um, ads, it's the same exact thing where I'm always thinking, like, I mean, we're laughing about this, right? Some TV ads are like, are they really think I'm now gonna go on their website and actually type in their company and buy their product. Um, so just there are certain things to think about um, of what's mm. really going on in the market. Yeah, and like have a good product because your course. customers are key and they will just refer it and refer it. And most of the things I've heard about in this space and anything I usually buy is through referrals. So take care of your customers and have a good product. 
You can do so much in terms of marketing of airdrops and bounties and all these things that look so shiny and great. Yeah. But at the end of the day, you need a good product as well. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'd love to hear from you about like <laughs> what companies you're working on. Like what you've done a lot of like PR strategies and like you specialize in strategy. Um, so what's kind of your best practices for that? Um, I think it's um, it's if we take a holistic view over the discussion itself. I mean the blockchain itself. Uh, to me, I. Uh, explain. I, this is like my um, my word or uh, code for blockchain. Every block of chain is a for is for change. Um, if we take that into this broad narration uh, and get the word out, um, then we make the connection. The community is there, and that's the beauty of blockchain. We're talking about decentralization. Uh, why? Because we're so tired of power. Uh, we don't want that that control being taken over. Uh, by the politicians, by the forces out there, but we want to bring people in. Mm -hmm. This is not about uniting the nations, it's, it's about the united world. A best friend of mine is here, uh, Kunal Sood, he's actually at the United Nations um, General Assembly, I hope that wouldn't be an uh, offensive thing for you, but he's my inspiration. Uh, he's holding um, powers and forcing that you know, women should be on, on top of blockchain and impacts and so forth. Uh, so I think the, the best um, um, key for a PR is involving the community, C creating this access. Um, if we have a team, um, we have to create a very easy decentralized access to the, the core uh, team members to communicate better. If I can contact the CEO directly, and if he's available to reply, it's very beautiful that um, it shows that that ICO is like taking care of me and plus they have a good narration out there that they're you know changing the world and another thing I mean for me is the social impact what are the projects that are you know going out there for example the projects that I'm taking based on referrals are mostly on uh, social impacts what we're gonna do about you know blockchain that's what blockchain is for uh, for example the project Shivam that I'm actually uh, working full time right now um, is disrupting the healthcare system. As a ver is, as as Kate explained, it's a very highly regulated uh, industry. There's so much above and beyond uh, about healthcare, but we don't know. But we are we are creating this kind of like voice and power and giving the giving them back to the community and people themselves to to decide what they want or restart um, um, energy democracy. Red project. It's actually giving the power to the consumers in order to trade utility. Um, these are the projects that are changing the world, and we have to uh, take that into consideration that if we have a good narration of what we are doing, a good case pr um, uh, product that is going to be out there, um, and a technology which we all are using, which is blockchain, and yes, other you know, economic patterns and um, um, different aspects of, you know, each token model and everything. I think these are the, the, the key uh, points that we need to remember. It's first creating the access. Um, if we have that connection, that intimacy, which has been lost, you know, yeah. in, in, like, in decades, and what the uh, uh, blockchain is bringing that together, I think that's, that's what we need. Um, we just have to, you know, uh, take that into consideration and get the word out and be honest. Yeah. And Can be community direct. and like, honesty and integrity is so key in this industry. It's a small kind of community already and it's growing, which is great. Mm -hmm. um, but community is so key to that. I, I'm 100% with you. And it's so nice when you go on Telegram, you can even speak yeah. to the CEO and the founder. I'm like, this is awesome. awesome. Like, yeah. how cool is that? And I was even like backstage and one of the like a very well-known VC came up to me. I was like, "What are you on? Are you on Telegram?" I'm like, "Yeah, sure. Like, <laughs> you can have my Telegram." Um, um, so that's awesome. Yeah, maybe um, just one thing: what we're doing right now that I advise also other people to do is on Telegram. Um, you can you can actually do different chats um, for different countries. So we started one for Germany, one for South Korea, fun, one for so they can actually uh, talk in their native languages. I think that's one. Yeah, I've seen that with a place. number of the ICOs that are giving you like communications around that yeah. what they're building, and it is in that language, which really helps, because, you know, mm -hmm. we've got to be connected here, but it'd be nice to have it in your own language, too. Um, so we've spoken a little bit around mentors, and you have a number of mentors, and we all do. Uh, there's a number of men in the crowd, a lot of men in the crowd, and, this, and all these events are pretty much men. Um, but for me, like, I've had a lot of male mentors that have helped me and really pushed me. Um, 
for guys in the crowd, how can they help women who want to get into blockchain, blockchain or want to get into cryptocurrency, how can they start to help them? I would say connections are really important. Uh, a lot of what we've talked about is community. A lot of what blockchain is is community. Uh, any anytime that I've gone to a conference or spoken or presented anything about our company, met everybody else, it's one of the most welcoming and well-connected communities that I've ever been a part of, which is a stark contrast to healthcare, where everything is siloed and competitive and everyone's concerned about their market share. Yeah. And so it's a really refreshing experience to be in blockchain. And I would say that the best way where where men can help is, is those connections. Um, one of the great things... Yeah, I just... There, I, so my perspective is actually a little bit different. So I'm one of the very few women that actually thinks like we're doing an okay job. Like out of all of the tech revolutions that have happened, it's still a very small percentage, but there are more women in this industry than any other, other tech revolution in the past. So we're moving in the right direction. We're still not there. Yeah. Um, and so that's where I think that community piece, those connections are really, really important. Um, there's probably someone that you know in your first or second degree connection that could be completely revolutionizing for a female entrepreneur or CEO or founder that you could just make that introduction to and help to foster that relationship. It's all about connections. Yeah, I agree. And even just writing an email intro to someone like, hey, you should meet this person. They're yeah. awesome. And that's all you need sometimes is just that connection. And I know that Peter and you, you exchange like YouTube videos and stuff like this on blockchain. So what about <laughs> you? He was telling me earlier, I was like, oh, that's awesome. Why would I be included in like what you're swapping here? Um, so yeah, what about you? Like in terms of mentors that you've had? I think that it's more, I've spent a lot of my life being a mentor. And I think that I'm just trying to learn something from everyone that I interact with. Yeah. And it's more for me, it's, it's actually been the opposite. I think it, that would be so cool. I think that I surround myself with a lot of equals and we all learn from each other. Yeah. And, you know, for me, I would, to, to build off of what you were saying, I really want to bring attention to the fact that two of the largest, I'm not saying ICOs are bad or evil or anything. I'm just saying like build something of substance. Two of the biggest ICOs that launched in this space, the first two of the first two biggest, like Tezos and Bancor, they're, they're both yeah. stocked with female leadership. Mm -hmm. And it's like, I keep hearing these conversations and I'm like, can we just like applaud these ladies yeah. for like, they've done some really huge, like, yeah. yes, 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 Woo! yes, 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 yes. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I'm making a, there's a lot of people get excited in the we blockchain want more industry. Weeps. We want more weeks. So keep weeping us. Yeah, so I, I would say that there, and, and that the communities of women, like in terms of making introductions as well, women operate as like a tribe. Yeah. Like I'm in so I was in a women in blockchain group and I'm like la la it's like on Telegram I'm like this is cool there's like 46 women in here I come back in the same month and there are 9,000 people there and I'm like what I'm like you guys don't have a product this is just like people wanting to talk about this mm -hmm. so I would say that in the same way it's it's really understanding how different people think and understanding women are amazing I would say in my personal career women have been amazing about introductions. They're like, yeah. oh, you're doing this thing. Let me connect you with these 100 people. And then I've met a few, like a pocket full of guys that are really good at that. And so I think it's actually understanding how we're either the same or different and taking the time to understand that and then complementing each other's skill sets. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. In terms of learning, I'm just trying to, for me personally, I'm just like, how can I learn from every person in this room? Because every moment is an opportunity for all of us to grow together. I think... Where we are all, we are all stewarding the growth of each other. Yeah. And I'm very lucky that I have some amazing, I have incredible people in my life. And I tend to surround myself with people that have pure hearts and pure intentions. So surround yourself with the right tribe and everything just goes. Absolutely. And I think one of the takeaways that I've taken is from being in Sydney, yeah. I'm from the UK, but being in Sydney and it's such a small community there. It's even smaller. Like there's only a few people in it. But having that community, people can like recommend you to other things. And I completely agree. Anyone in this room you should learn from and see them as a mentor as well and yeah. each other as a mentor. That's why I see it. Thanks so much, ladies. It's been so awesome to have you on the panel and be the last one. They're so great, right? <laughs> Cheers.